I am so very happy to be here and to receive from the Central Chennai Committee of the CPIM a check of 25 lakh rupees collected in a house-to-house -house drive by our comrades here in Central Chennai. For us, this is not just a question of rupees or money. It represents for us the faith and the trust of the people of this area for the red flag. And it represents for us every drop of sweat of the workers of this area, of those living in the bustis of this area, of our employees who work so hard, for the small shopkeepers who work so hard in spite of having limited income, they felt it their political duty to give this donation to the CPIM. And therefore, from this platform, I would like to thank every single one of our CPIM workers and activists who went house to house, office to office, desk to desk, shop to shop, to collect this fund. And I thank every single donor for giving this fund with love for the CPIM and the red flag in Kalab, Zindabad, and thank you to all of them. And I also want to extend my greetings to all of you who have come to this meeting after a hard day's work, and especially I want to thank my very, very dear sisters. I know when you come this late at night for a meeting, after doing all the work, after doing all the family work also, and then you come to the meeting, I really respect that. Thank you very much, my dear sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow, the Election Commission of India is going to declare the dates for the 18th Lok Sabha elections. These are no ordinary elections. For us, dedicated to the unity of India, these Lok Sabha elections, and we should make no mistake about it, these Lok Sabha elections are not just about votes. These Lok Sabha elections about saving India, about saving our beloved country. And these elections are going to decide what is going to be the future of our country, our secular democratic republic. So the first question is, when we say, save India, we have to ask ourselves, save India from whom? My dear sisters and brothers, there may be many external threats to the security of our country. But today, the reality is, that the greatest threat to the constitution of India, to the character of the Indian Republic, is from those who have run the central government for the last 10 years, the Bhatia Janta Party, the RSS, and its allies in the NDA who have sought to subvert the constitution of India. My dear friends, because of the Supreme Court of India, only yesterday we have come to know the extent of the subversion of the parliamentary democratic system of this country by the Bhartiya Janta Party and its corruption. What does these electoral bonds show us? You remember Modi ji's statement. Non-Sabita Martin, 
non sapida vum vida mater. So, what is the lecture bond showing? Not only the leaders, but this Modi led government has proven to be the greatest eater of corporate funds that India has ever known. Of over 12,000 crore rupees, almost 50% was taken by the Nakhaunga Nakhanewale. This Modi government, it has lied to the people. It has cheated the people. They said they are fighting corruption. They said they are fighting Moolal. But actually, they were taking money from those Moolal. So they used the ED. They used the CBI. They used the IT. They put cases on those who are corrupt. But Modi Sarkar, BJP, and all their organizations were taking money from those very companies. That is what the electoral bond record in the election commission website shows. That is one aspect of it. What is the other aspect of it? You help me, I will help you. Kutta Kalavani. And who is the Kutta Kalavani with? First, please understand that. Now all the mining companies, the big mining companies, they have given huge amounts of money. All the big construction companies have given huge amounts of money. And what did they get in return? To give you one example, one company in Maharashtra gave hundreds of crores of rupees around 940 crores of rupees to BJP. And very soon, they got a construction contract of 40,000 crore rupees. That is what is called Kupta Kalavani. Another example, you remember that terrible tragedy in Uttarakhand when the tunnel collapsed and 41 workers were trapped in the tunnel in Silkiara. My dear friends, that company gave crores of rupees to the BJP. No action has been taken against that company. But you will be shocked to hear that that brave miner his name is Bakir Hassan. He crawled into the tunnel with his team of workers. He saved those 41 workers one by one. But this BJP government, this central government in Delhi sent the bulldozer to break the house of Bakir Hassan. That is the face of the BJP. Shame on this government. It rewards those companies. It has quick pro quo with those companies. But for the workers, for the heroes of India, this BJP government has nothing to give, no guarantees to give, except hunger and poverty and bulldozers. And therefore, when we say this is a pro-corporate regime. It is proven by the huge corporate money taken by the BJP and in return the change of policies, the privatization, the handing over of national assets to corporates and the bulldozing of workers' rights. That is the reality of this corrupt Modi government. My dear friends, this Modi government tries to teach us about patriotism. And what is their desh bhakti? To help the corporates and to destroy the livelihoods of the youth of this country, the women of this country, the poor of this country. 
Every day Modi says Modi guarantee. What is Modi guarantee? I will tell you. In the last 10 years, more than 3 lakh 12,000 daily waged and migrant workers have been forced to commit suicide. That means on an average, every day in Modi's India, 95 poor workers have been forced to commit suicide. This is Modi guarantee. There is no guarantee for the poor in India today. There is no guarantee for the farmers of India. Yesterday in Delhi, there was a huge meeting and demonstration of the farmers of India. What are they demanding? They are demanding a minimum support price. What do workers demand? They demand a minimum living wage. What did Modi government do? When farmers were trying to come to Delhi, Modi government used drones. You know what drones are? Those small, like helicopters, planes, small planes, mini helicopters. He used those drones to throw tear gas shells on the farmers of India. To beat the farmers, he used rubber bullets. This is the Modi government's guarantee. So for the corporates, it's Kupta Kalavani. And for the Kisan and the workers and the poor, it is treating them like the enemies of the country. This is the reality of the pro-corporate regime of the Modi government, which we must remember. And these are the policies which have to be defeated by removing the BJP RSS government from power. And the second aspect, the attack on constitutional values of secularism, the CAA notification of rules. We are very happy and proud that many governments, the Tamil Nadu government, led by our brother Stalin, the Kerala government, led by Kermit Pinaray Vijayan, they have made clear statements that Black Law CAA will not be implemented in Tamil Nadu, it will not be implemented in Kerala. Those are the statements which have come. Because they are not interested in humanitarian reason. They only want to target the minority community of the Muslims. We are happy that every single constituent of the India platform has declared they will never allow the CAA to be implemented in all the states where they are. We stand for secularism. We stand for democracy. We stand for social justice. Today's special focus is that of the attack of the Bharatiya Janata Party led government on the principle of federalism in our constitution and the rights of the states. The BJP shamelessly using the post of governor to put forward their politics against non-BJP elected state governments. So many bills passed by the Tamil Nadu Assembly have not been accepted by the governor of the state at the behest of the BJP central government. The same thing is happening in Kerala. The Tamil Nadu government went to the Supreme Court. The Kerala government went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court told the governors they have to act within the four corners of the constitution of India. But they are not doing that. Financially also, so much money is owed to the non-BJP non governments. The share of GST, the share of taxes, that is all being centralized by the BJP government. My dear friends, in the last 10 years, 28 lakh crore rupees 
Remember this number. 28 lakh crores of rupees was picked from your pocket through excise and other duties on petroleum product. 28 lakh crores jeopardy. Prices are going up. Indirect taxes are going up. Corporate taxes are coming down. That is our money. It is your money. It is people's money. And Modi ji says, Modi ki guarantee. Modi guarantee with people's money. This is the new India of the Modi government. I want to congratulate the DMK government for its consistent fights for the principle of federalism. And coming here to Tamil Nadu, I want to extend my warm appreciation that when Comrade Pinaray Vijayan sat on Dharna in Delhi for the rights of the states, the first message which was received at the Dharna was from the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, our brother Stalin. This is a fight for the people of the states. This is a fight for the autonomy of the states. This is a fight for democracy. And this is a fight to respect and to protect and to defend the federal principles of the Constitution of India. And we in the CPIM are fully in support of all the efforts of the Tamil Nadu government to fight for the federal structure of the Constitution of India. The second focus of this meeting is the issue of women's rights. What to say about Nari Shakti of Modi ji? This Nari Shakti of Modi ji, what does it mean? He brought a women's reservation bill to parliament and he passed that bill. He made it a law which postponed one third reservation for women by at least 10 years. That means he played a fraud on the women of India. He betrayed the women of India. So in the next parliament, instead of having 180 women in parliament, which is what the women's bill would have given us, today we are behind most countries in South Asia. And the most dangerous part is that in these 10 years, the crimes against women have increased by 28% in the Modi years. In the last year, according to the Modi government's report, every day on an average, 88 women of India were raped every day. On an average, every year for the last 10 years, 7,000 women, 6 to 7,000 women have been burned to death for dowry. That means on an average, if you take that figure, a total of 60 to 70,000 women were burned to death in India during the Modi years. My dear friends, this is more than all the soldiers who were killed in the wars that India has fought. No justice for women. Why is this so? That out of every hundred cases, 75 cases the accused are let off. Because this government, this party, the RSS, they come out in support of the criminal. Remember what happened with Bilkis Banu. Remember what happened with the heartless victim. Remember what happened with the female wrestlers of India. In every case, the BJP came out in support of the perpetrators of violence. My dear friends, this government is run by a Manuvadi ideology. 
This government is run with an ideology against social justice. This government is run by the old brotherical ideas of India society. And that is why women are not safe in India. That is why women's subordination has increased in India. And therefore, for women's security, for the rights of the states, it is absolutely essential for us to ensure the defeat of the BJP, the defeat of the BJP RSS government. We are very happy that under the leadership of the DMK, the talks with the other parties and constituents of India have been resolved. The street sharing is over. Now is the time for the strength pooling. All of our strength together of ensuring that 39 out of 39 seats in Tamil Nadu and one out of one seats in Puducherry. In all these seats, BJP and its allies, direct or indirect, the IDMK we know. Now they are saying, no, no, we are not. But we know the road is being built for AIDMK to go to BJP. So direct or indirect, 39 out of 39 seats for the parties of the India platform, for the DMK-led alliance. Every CPIM sympathizer will work day and night to ensure the victory of those who are committed to secularism, democracy, and to the rights of the working people of India under the India platform. I thank you very much indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear comrades of the Central Chennai Committee for organizing this meeting, for this record-breaking collection of 25 lakh rupees. I once again extend my greetings to you in Kalab, Zindabad. <laughs>